Welcome to this tutorial today where we are going to be talking about some basic differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. So we'll have a look at a few of the defining features of these types of cells and what differentiates them from each other. So I've got a table up here and we'll put in our prokaryotic cell here and we'll put in our eukaryotic cell and we'll make a list of a few of the features. So if we're going to be having a look at a few of the features, it will probably help if I have a uh, drawing up here of both types of cells. So I'll put that here right now. So we have our prokaryotic cell right here and we have our eukaryotic cell right next to it. And we can already see they look very, very different to each other without even talking about exactly what those differences are yet. But if I were to ask you what the key difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote cell is, the answer would almost always be the presence or absence of a nucleus. So within prokaryotes, we don't have a nucleus. So we don't have a nuclear envelope that contains our genetic material and we won't have a nucleolus, which is the region within the nucleus that creates the ribosomal subunits. But in our eukaryotic cells, we do have a nucleus. We have that nuclear envelope that's protecting our, our chromosomes here. And we can see we have a nucleolus within there as well, which is going to be constructing your ribosomal subunits. And while we're on the topic of the nucleus and the uh, DNA and chromosomes within, let's just talk about that. So we've got our DNA and the difference between our DNA of the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells is that prokaryotes usually only have a single circular chromosome. So we've got this chromosome down here and if we were to uh, unravel it completely, it would be one uh, giant circle. But in a eukaryotic cell, we usually have several chromosomes. So we've got many chromosomes and they are linear. So they're not circular. Now I'll just show that up down here. So we've got these chromosomes here and these are how your chromosomes would appear during mitosis. And you've probably already noticed that within the eukaryotic cell, I have these uh, strange structures drawn in the orange. And the reason I have those there is to highlight the fact that our eukaryotic cells have something called organelles, which our prokaryotes do not. And our organelles are just intracellular membrane bound structures that are going to be performing uh, specific tasks like the uh, lysosomes, which are going to be digesting particles or the mitochondria, which will be performing respiration or even your endoplasmic reticulum, which will be uh, synthesizing proteins and lipids within the cell. So we can see already that the eukaryote has a much more complex intracellular network of organelles. And if we move now to the outside of the cell, something we're going to see that differentiates these two cells once again is the structure of the flagella. And the flagella is what these cells use to move. Now within a prokaryote, the flagella will be somewhat simple and is usually made from just two protein building blocks. So we have our flagella here. We can see that the prokaryote has a couple and your prokaryotes may have many different arrangements of flagella. But with your eukaryotic cell, they are much more complex and are going to be made from microtubules, which will extend from the centrioles within your cell. Okay, now let's talk about how these cells replicate or how these cells divide. With prokaryotic cells, the process is going to be very simple and it's called binary fission. Now binary fission is just going to be a process in which the uh, prokaryotic cell simply uh, splits apart into two separate cells, each containing one copy of that circular chromosomal DNA. But with eukaryotic cells, we need to use the process called mitosis, which is far more complex and has many steps. Okay, so we're just over halfway through all of these differences now, and we can already see that there's a huge amount of separation between how these cells are put together and what they're doing. The next 
feature we're going to look at within both of our cells is something called ribosomes. And the ribosomes are going to be of a different uh, type between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So within the prokaryote, we have a type of ribosome called the 70S or the small ribosome. And within eukaryotes, we have the larger ATS ribosomes. And actually within our organelles as well, we have smaller ribosomes um, additionally. So within the mitochondria, we will find a different, smaller type of ribosome. And we know the ribosomes are just the protein factories within our cell. And if we were to take a look at the cell wall of our prokaryotes and eukaryotes, we're going to find there's a very big difference. So our prokaryotes usually have a cell wall, so we don't want to get it confused with the plasma membrane. That's not a cell wall. And the prokaryote almost always has something within it called peptidoglycan. But eukaryotes, we don't usually have a cell wall. And if we do, it's going to be relatively simple, containing uh, things like uh, cellulose and chitin. So let's take a quick closer look at the cell wall of a prokaryote. So if we zoom into this segment here, the first thing we're going to see is that we do have our plasma membrane. So we have our plasma membrane on the base and then lying on top of the plasma membrane, we're going to have a structure connected to the membrane called peptidoglycan. And we'll talk uh, in much more detail about peptidoglycan when we look at the structure of gram-negative and gram-positive cell walls of prokaryotes. So just for now, know that this cell wall component is peptidoglycan here, and we'll write that down as well. And within that peptidoglycan, we're going to find other structures as well, such as uh, tycoic acids or lipotycoic acids. And I'll just uh, draw them quickly to signify that we have something else within the peptidoglycan, but we won't really talk about that in detail right now. And we're not going to find this peptidoglycan within our eukaryotes, but we will find the plasma membrane. So let's have a quick talk about the differences in the plasma membranes of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Now I'll just quickly draw the plasma membrane of our eukaryotic cell as well so we can see the plasma membrane of our prokaryote but we don't yet know what the plasma membrane of our eukaryote looks like. So it's going to be very similar, the uh, phospholipid bilayer, but not 100% the same. So I'll just uh, draw the phospholipid bilayer here and I'll leave a space in here for cholesterol. Now within the plasma membrane of our eukaryotic cells, we're usually going to find cholesterol. So I'll write that down. Okay, so cholesterol. And the reason we have cholesterol within the plasma membrane of our eukaryotic cell is to help with structural integrity, but also to play a role in cell-to-cell signaling. And that's an important distinction to make. Our eukaryotes are usually part of a multicellular organism, while our prokaryotic cells are single-celled organisms. So let's quickly write down all of the differences we have within this plasma membrane. So within our prokaryotes, we're not going to usually find any sterols like cholesterol or carbohydrates. But within our eukaryote, we do have that cholesterol there for the reasons I just mentioned. But we'll also find carbohydrates and the carbohydrates are going to act as receptors. So I'll just draw a few carbohydrates here. We can see sticking out of our plasma membrane and they're going to be our receptors usually. All right, now we're almost at the end of this list of basic differences and the thing I want to uh, finish on or the difference I want to finish on is size. So with our prokaryotic cells, they're usually only going to be between uh, 0.2 and 2 micrometers in diameter, so quite small and I'll just put that on the cell itself as well. So this whole diameter here would usually be around a 0.2 to 2 micrometers. But with our eukaryotic cells, they're going to be uh, anywhere between 10 and 100 micrometers, which is a 
huge difference, a huge difference in cell size. And with that, we've covered a few of the major differences between our prokaryotic and our eukaryotic cells. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.